Uh, tēnā Koto katoa, Martin, thank you very much for those introductory remarks. Can I also acknowledge Lou Sanson, Director General of DOC, great to have you here Lou. Can I acknowledge all of the GIA partners that are in the room? Uh, thank you very much for your commitment and its ongoing commitment. I'm very proud of the relationship that you have formed with MPI. Can I acknowledge uh, BMAC Chair, uh, where is Graham? Thanks for your leadership, providing good advice through to me. Can I also acknowledge the biosecurity champions? Martin's already done that, but thank you for all of the amazing work that you are doing out there in the community. Can I also acknowledge the biosecurity 2025 peer reviewers? Glenis, Mac, John, thank you very much for your contribution and I'll talk a little bit more about you soon. Before I do that, can I just start with something that is very topical, and that is, of course, the devastation on the east coast of the South Island. I was down there last Thursday. Uh, it was worse than what I thought, flying down from Wellington. You've all seen it on the news. You've all seen it on social media. Uh, widespread devastation down that coast there and actually inland as well. GNS are estimating 100,000 landslips. Uh, so if you extrapolate that across rural New Zealand, it is massive. I've seen fault lines heading through farms. I've seen wool sheds and cow sheds uh, basically just munted. I've seen personal property that's fallen over. Uh, the devastation down there is bigger than I thought it was going to be. It is going to take a long period of time to help rebuild these rural communities. So we announced on Friday a support package of around $5 million. We know that that won't be everything. We know that it won't go and cover everything, but the real focus will be on some of those non-insurable items on farm. We'll fund rural support trusts. We'll fund some coordinators. I'm very keen to see if we can get agriculture students from Lincoln and Massey, Telford and Taratahi on these farms over the summer months to work with the adverse events team from Federated Farmers to provide that coordination. The real focus down there right now, it's been in the past on human welfare and making sure farmers and their families are looking after one another and their communities, focusing on animal welfare as well. Now it's moving into the recovery mode a real focus on getting those water supplies connected as well. Then if we focus into the power industry, uh, where I made a pretty significant announcement uh, yesterday, and that was a tough call uh, that I had to make uh, under the emergency powers that haven't been ever done under the Fisheries Act, where I have indicated a temporary closure for uh, rock lobster for up to one month and a temporary closure for power for up to three months, and we'll review that in due course and see if those need to be extended. What's happened down there is the sea level rise has come out by one to four metres. It is massive, and now we have uh, a, basically the biomass of power, and we're not quite sure about the numbers, but let's say it's 50% is now high and dry and dead. So we need to get scientists in there. We announced a $2 million scientific package to put some divers, to put the scientists in the water to understand about the ecosystem health. We just don't know what we don't know at the moment. We don't know if the ecosystem will support the power fishery. I, my uh, early indications are that it will, but it's going to take some time to rebuild that fishery. Then we think about the impacts of not just that, but on the wider Kaikoura community, and of course powers canned in Blenheim and, and uh, Christchurch. So there's widespread economic losses, uh, not just affecting uh, the east coast of the South Island, but it will be felt uh, elsewhere as well. And it's currently being felt uh, in Wellington. But I guess one positive is that under the leadership of John Key and Bill English, the New Zealand economy is in great shape. $1.8 billion of surplus, unemployment below 5%, economic growth of 3.6% above the US, above Australia, and above uh, the UK. So we can handle a bit of a shock like this. We've proven this government that we can rebuild the largest city in Christchurch. We have experience in managing natural disaster. And as I was thinking, Martin, this morning when I was jotting a few notes down, uh, MPI's been pretty good at managing 
uh, big events as well, and this is another one, whether it's WPC80, whether it's the 1080 criminal blackmail threat, whether it's dealing and eradicating Queensland fruit fly here in Grey Lynn. So MPI will do all that we can. We've got a whole of government response and we'll support these communities to get back on their feet. Today, importantly, we are here to launch Biosecurity 2025, which is the direction statement, and it rebuilds on the good work of the strategy from 2003. It doesn't replace, it just works and rebuilds on that strategy from, uh, what are we, about 13 years ago now. It's taken longer to get this document to where it is, longer than I would like, but we've had a few events along the way that I just talked about, but importantly, a lot of you in this room have been a part of working on this document and I thank you for your engagement. And when I look across this room, I can see a whole lot of individual companies, I can see a whole lot of industry representatives, I can see universities, I can see regional councils, I can see central government, I can see iwi leaders, I can see ENGOs. So everyone has a stake in Biosecurity 2025. This is going to allow us to have a step change on how we manage biosecurity. We've got massive challenges in the biosecurity system. Just have a look at the data that's in the document today. From 2003 to 2014, how we see an increase in trade. We've got 37% increase in sea containers. We've got 216% increase in mail parcels. We've got a 47% increase over that decade period and airline passengers coming to New Zealand. Those numbers, I think if we cut them in the last couple of years now, we're going to see even more significant growth, particularly in tourists coming in. So we've got complex markets, we've got supply chains to manage, we've got rising tourist numbers, we've got ongoing challenges with climate change, just to name a few. But MPI is very good at making sure our borders are strong. From time to time we do have incursions. I'm going to talk about one that's been very successful in eradication in a moment. But just this week it's become public that MPI stopped a passenger coming in to Wellington Airport carrying some fruit with four Queensland fruit fly larvae inside this fruit. So we're going to need to continue to do more to strengthen our border. Before we look forward out in the next nine years I think it's an opportunity just to recap on what we've done in the last few years to strengthen the biosecurity system. So it's a record all-time high of investment into the biosecurity system of $223 million. That's the highest ever. Budget 2015, a bigger cash injection last year to ensure we can put more people on the front line. 50 new front line quarantine inspectors, 20 extra dog detector teams, X-ray machines that we can roll out, some of those portable, hugely important for the cruise line industry. $87, sorry, $87 million. Bill English would be happy if it was only $87. <laughs> I remember those discussions in his office. $87 million into the biocontainment facility in Wallaceville. The MPI were responding from the earthquake and working out of Wallaceville uh, until recently. And we are making a significant investment to protect the animal industries in this country. It's a bit like a big insurance uh, premium to ensure that if we ever do have an exotic animal scare, that we can test it and keep our markets open. We have Officer Good Boy, which is the fantastic uh, voiceover with the Beagle caricature of T Radar playing on most of our airlines coming into New Zealand. Wakes up the passengers on their snooze on descent, makes sure that they fill out that declaration appropriately otherwise they're likely to get an instant fine. We've got the border clearance levy, which we put through an urgency last year, and that is going great guns. That means instead of taxpayers of New Zealand funding the border for biosecurity and customs, it's a user pays model. 55% of passengers that come across our border into New Zealand are indeed foreigners. Instead of me having to go upstairs to level nine in the beehive every so often and bang on the Minister of Finance desk, say, Geez, we've got these massive numbers of tourists. Now, as the tourist numbers increase, we can match the demand with more cash and focus on the border. 
And as I've already acknowledged the 12 GIA signatories, thank you for coming on board. We're working closely with quite a few others. I'm very excited about the animal industry. Tim's in the room today. Looking forward to uh, getting you across the line. Looking forward to getting dairy across the line. Thank you for your support. We'll continue to work with you in the future. So focusing on the direction statement today, Biosecurity 2025, five key directions. The first one is a biosecurity team of 4.7 million people. Collective effort across all New Zealanders to raise the awareness. We've set some specific challenging goals. 75% of adult New Zealanders to understand what biosecurity means. 100,000 Kiwis regularly taking action to control pests in their community. Lou, we estimate at the moment it's about 40,000 with the great initiative that you're championing about predator-free 2050. I was talking to your minister the other day. She thinks that 100,000 is probably going to be a bit light. So I said, good on her. Let's get over 100,000 people involved and working in their communities on pest management. 90% of relevant businesses actively managing pest and disease risk in their businesses. And I acknowledge the Port of Tauranga and all the key players there that had a massive open day yesterday, making sure the public is more aware of what the impacts for biosecurity mean to that port and mean to that region. Then the second initiative is all about a toolbox for tomorrow. New and emerging technologies offer massive potential to drive improvements. And one of those will be what Martin has just announced, an app for airline travellers. Currently working well in the cruise passenger area, we now want to have a modern app just to remind everyone about all of the biosecurity risk when they come to New Zealand. It needs to be based on scientific evidence and we want to aim to see an investment across private and public science in the biosecurity system increase from 40 million to 80 million by 2025. We know that's going to be a challenge, but we've set this aspirational goal because we need to invest more, in my view, in science to do with biosecurity. The third direction is to do with smart, free-flowing information. Better use of information helping us make the right decisions. We want to see more information publicly accessible. There's a whole lot of information that the MPI has. There's a whole lot of information that DOC, that regional councils have, that CRIs have, that universities have. We need to collaborate more to have the best data available. We, the fourth one is about effective leadership and governance. And Roger, you're going to be heading up when you get back from China shortly. You're going to be heading up a steering group. We've given you a six-month target to get the steering group together to work on the long-term focus of governance and leadership for this document. This is only the start today, this launch. We're going to need to get the key players in the room, the leadership of Roger Smith, to work out what is the clear strategy and governance that we need to drive this uh, direction going forward. The fifth one is about focusing on tomorrow's skills and assets. The right knowledge and experience, a more proactive approach. Now we believe we've got a standing army that we could call on that's about 60,000 through the biosecurity capability network. We've set a target of doubling and more, 150,000 people we want to be able to have that we can stand up when we need to. That will go out there and publicly talk about the importance of biosecurity, that are happy to move into schools. And our champions, we're going to hear from those in a moment, our champions will get out there and sell the message about the importance of biosecurity in our schools and in our workplaces. The process to drive change actually kicks off today and tomorrow. It's all about the workshops tomorrow, making things happen. So thank you collectively for getting on board. A couple of announcements from me since I'm up in front of you today. The first one is I'm very pleased to announce that New Zealand has acceded to the International Convention Ships for Ballast Water. 
It places stricter controls on ballast discharges and aligns us with 53 other countries. I took that through Cabinet a couple of weeks ago. Very important, Gary, for you uh, and for the power industry, for the marine environment. So we're very focused on doing more in this space. Tomorrow, hopefully, when my colleague Maggie Barry comes off the ice from down south, we will be formally announcing that we have collectively with MPI and DOC leading the charge on this, well done Lou and your team, that we have eradicated successfully the great white butterfly that was a real issue in Nelson. So well done to the team because if this great white butterfly had got established, the cost that I have seen across the country could have been over $133 million a year. The final announcement today is about an awards program. I've come up with this idea where we want to recognise and showcase excellence in the biosecurity system. We want to have an awards event in the middle of 2017 across different categories. We want you all to be involved. Please start thinking about it today. Who are the biosecurity champions in your business? in your community, in your industry, that you might want to put forward. We're working on different categories. Please come forward, have a talk to Roger and Julie and Jeff and the team from MPI that are here today to talk about those different opportunities of those categories. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for having me along today. Uh, I look forward to engaging with you throughout the day. I'll be here for a good part of the day, so please come up and talk to me. And Thanks for rolling up your sleeves and getting involved. This is only the start today, the launch. It's a significant event, but it's going to take your drive and passion to work very closely with central government to ensure that this document doesn't sit on the shelf and gather dust, that it continues to be a living document and drives the overall strength of our biosecurity system. Thank you very much. This here is Te Aroai Whenua, which is a Māori carving. It is the shield of land. Uh, it has the head depicting the sky, uh, the body depicting the land, and the tail depicting the sea. It is the inaugural ministerial award for a biosecurity champion. Now, this individual has given a lifetime of dedication to the primary sector, focused on biosecurity and animal welfare, a proud history of 30 years, a driver of the original 2003 strategy, was awarded an Order of Merit for Biosecurity Services in 2011, was the Chief Veterinary Officer for MAF from 1986 to 1991, Someone that I consider as a friend, someone that I've got to know extremely well as former chair of the National Animal Welfare Advisory Committee. Can I ask you to stand and put your hands together for Dr. John Hellstrom? Thank you. Those who know me know I'm seldom stuck for a word, but uh, this is just fantastic. This is, I feel so, so proud and so humble at the same time. Uh, it's 30 years ago I sat down one summer and wrote the first draft of the Agricultural Security Service, and that morphed into biosecurity in, in the 1990s, and now here we are. Fantastic. Uh, I will say one thing. I was very proud of the fact that and I fought like hell to get a kākāpō on the cover of the 2003 strategy. I regard that as one of my great achievements. <laughs> because it symbolised biosecurity was more than just agriculture. It was about this wonderful country we have and all the unique values we have here.
The thing that I'm really proud of is that the 2016 direction statement is a landscape. We've moved on. We don't have to have cows and sheep. We know biosecurity is about the whole country's values. Thank you very much.